hey fellow babies uh apologies for my cold and cough i may cough while i'm talking but uh, thanks for joining us on packer factor on sifted.net if you are watching it real time it's because you're either a patreon patron and we appreciate your patronage or because you are a subscriber to our youtube channel we appreciate that as well um, or if you have done neither of those, uh, or even if you have done both of those, um, you can link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account, and we get paid by Amazon. It uh, costs you nothing. So please check the instructions in the show description, and it'll help you figure out how to get money so Shane can keep filming these things. Let's get to today's question. From Twitter, at tmoney58. After the Cyberpunk 2077 de debacle in Q4 2020, and now Battlefield 2042 and GTA 4 Trilogy in Q4 21, what kind of factors do publishers and studios consider when determining whether to release buggy, unfinished games or delay it out of the holiday shopping season? Um, good question. And, you know, I think some of them are excusable, like the GTA Trilogy. That was a very late decision. Um, and I think that the developers probably thought it was easier to remaster than it was um the you know gta those three games were all i think the first two were ps2 exclusives and the third one was uh was on both xbox the third one was the one that peter moore showed the tattoo of san andreas um but which was a surprise but the, but they were all the ps2 generations so three three on ps2 and one on xbox original um and i think that um that the tech was probably more challenging to upscale them than, than take to recognize. Um, so it came out, and I'm not even sure what the bugs were. So, you know, it's like the games work, but they just are choppy. You know, and again, I'm not really sure exactly what's going on because the code should be pretty similar to, you know, it's at least the level, the, le the way the levels play out. Um, I haven't played the trilogy yet, and I think that you kind of had a signal that it was going to be buggy because they put a delay between when they were available digitally and when they're going to be available on disc. Um, and so I, that one, I think just they, they were overly ambitious for a title that was really old. And so they, they tried to do too much. Um, Cyberpunk and Battlefield, uh, absolutely, those were rushed to hit an earnings number. You know, they were rushed to get out in a holiday quarter. Um, it's historically holiday sales give you a lift and the lift is for a bunch of reasons but but primarily it has to do with gifts and, and the gift could be somebody gives you a gift or it could be somebody gives you money as a gift and you can afford to buy the game um, but but there is a lift in game sales and then there's a lift in console sales typically during the holiday which we're probably not seeing this this year because of the supply chain but um, you tend to get higher sales in the holiday quarter by about double. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really change lifetime sales that much. But if a game, you know, like Call of Duty probably wouldn't be any different if it came out in June every year than if it came out in November, because it's kind of an annual franchise. So it really, holiday doesn't really give Madden a boost, doesn't really give FIFA a boost. Um, but I think that, I think that for these event games, Cyberpunk, you know, was the first one, and Battlefield is the fifth, and I think it, what, the last one was three years ago or something. When they come out periodically, you do get a boost, and I think that, you know, it t it's the rare company, Take-Two, that is willing to take a GTA V remastered and push it out into March. And th I, th I thought the GTA V remastered delay was because they're adding content to GTA 5 because they're saying hey if you bought it on PS4 or PS3 and then you bought it again on PS4 then when we ask you to buy it on PS5 we better give you something more um, but it may be that they just have are having trouble you know upscaling old tech to to next gen um, but look the, the companies are making a decision on whether if a game comes out late and gets let's say an 85 is it going to sell more units lifetime than if it comes out on time and gets a 78 and probably that's a close call if it's 85 and 68 it's not a close call you delay um, and i think that the reason that you probably got cyberpunk out before it was ready is because the developers were um, 
confident, hyper confident that the game was going to be great, and they thought they thought that u- users would overlook the bugs. I think that's true of Battlefield, but I think that the cracks in EA's armor started to show the way they rolled out Battlefield for reviews. So, uh, and I all my knowledge comes from uh, a launcher article, whatever that guy's name is, Hume, I think. Um, but he said that the the early review copies for the uh, November 12th early access were PC only, one map, and three hours of gameplay. And that's all the reviewers could look at. And what a surprise, the initial reviews were like 80 because it was a very, it was a controlled leak, a controlled release. They could only play one map in only three hours. And even then, his review said, that audio didn't work, audio chat didn't work. You couldn't have voice chat with your with your uh, in multiplayer, which is pretty lame. I mean, it seems like a weird thing to leave out of a game. Um, <clears throat> then a week later, the console reviews started leaking out, and what do you know? They weren't limited to one map, and they weren't limited to three hours. And I looked at PS5 and Xbox Series S X and Xbox One. I think I don't think there's any PS4 reviews. Um, there were about 20, and the average is in the 60s. Uh, I think probably 66, something like that. Um, and when I say the average, I don't think there might have been one above an 80, but of the 20 reviews, it's like 18 of them or 70 or below. That's not good. Um, so I think EA knew, or they wouldn't have controlled the the release. And you know, the question is, would, would shareholders forgive them if they said, hey? You know, we're going to delay Battlefield for three months and get it right. Um, yeah, I think they would have. Uh, EA delayed Battlefield for four or five weeks. You know, it was supposed to launch a month earlier. Um, I think it was supposed to launch at the end of October or mid October. That's when you knew they had problems. Um, they had a beta and they put out a press release like the day the beta started saying, oh, the beta is an old version. You know, don't worry about this. And, and, you know, there was just too many red flags that, that there were problems with that game. And, uh, you know, I think they need to, to talk to the developers and talk to the PR people and say, let's not release crap stuff and let's be honest with, with gamers because people figure it out, you know, once they see it. So um, how good is good enough? And, and I, I have this running uh, debate with a, a friend who's an expert on Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. And he said, Netflix content doesn't have to be good, but it has to be good enough. Just good enough for you to watch it and justify the subscription oh. price. So I think Battlefield, you know, is it good enough to, to warrant spending 60 bucks? I got, I read the reviews, the, even the, the ones that gave it 60s. It is, it apparently is good enough. Um, I, I personally think reviewers are just, like, I think to be a game reviewer, you're kind of born it. Um, it, it's they they ding everything for oh my god this Call of Duty is too much like the one five versions ago you know like like whatever oh we've seen zombies before yeah no Sherlock um, so I I don't know like I I don't know how you can rate FIFA for example it's the same every single year you know and it better be it's a sim game it better look just like soccer. You know, and, and last year, if it looked perfectly like soccer, then how much more perfect can it be this year? So I'm shocked that FIFA doesn't get a 97 every single year because it's a great game. But man, every year it seems to get a point or two lower. It's just like every year, oh, there's something I didn't like, you know. Oh, that guy's shoelaces didn't flop properly when the wind hit them. Like, shut up. Well, so, I think people expect the game to get better. I know they do. And when but, they stagnate. But a sports sim is just not going to get better. Why not? How? Everything can get better. It looks like a movie. To you, it does. Yeah, to, to me, To someone it does. who plays it every year, it doesn't. They have a more discerning taste. I guess. I don't know. I, I okay. Then don't buy it. I don't know. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't find those reviews helpful. I just don't. Like, you don't play FIFA. The people who play FIFA, it's insane. Like, that game is crazy complicated. No, I know. But the people who play it, every little part of that matters. Yeah, and I so if they screw that up, or they add but they something don't that screw it, work. But they don't screw it up. They do add stuff every year. But they don't screw anything up. Yeah, they do. They'll change stuff to make it worse. They will. Why? Madden, same deal. I haven't played Madden since, like, 13. What you're really arguing is they should just release one version 
and just update, update the players for 30 bucks. Yeah, whatever. exactly. Yeah, right, right. that's what they should do. They should. I agree. I, I actually would love to see sports games work that way. I mean, I'd love sports games to work like World of Warcraft, where it just like it constantly gets better. It's a platform. Yeah, or League of Legends, where it just constantly gets better and you don't worry about it. Anyway, um, all right, so I don't know what to tell you, but the answer is uh, they consider how much money they're going to lose if they delay. Um, they're not particularly concerned about time value. So if they think they're going to make $100 million if they launch in November and $100 million if they launch in February, they would just launch in February. They don't care about the interest on the $100 million. Um, but, but truthfully, I think it's the hubris that the developer thinks that what they're releasing isn't that bad. And I think that's what happened with Cyberpunk. To be honest with you, I think those guys just didn't expect it to be as bad as it was. And sometimes they think that people aren't going to notice, you know, that they'll find, they'll put some bugs in there by accident, leave some bugs in there, and that <coughs> nobody will notice. But I, honestly, you guys do notice. So, okay, thanks for joining us on Packer Factor. And if you are a Patreon patron and watching on sifted.net, we appreciate it. If you are uh, a subscriber to the YouTube channel and paying up for that, then thank you so much. It's keeping us in macaroni and cheese. Um, if you have done neither of those, or even if you have, please remember to link your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch Prime account. Pretty easy to do. You just have to re-up it every month so that we get paid, and that the instructions are in the show description. And at a minimum, you must follow me on Twitter at Michael Pactor. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.